excuse me, how I like to draw the diagram is to start off with that bottom line which represents time. Now this line of time can represent months, it can re represent weeks, it can represent years, it can represent an entire lifetime. So the time, the amount of time is not defined. However, the journey and the process that you will go through is very clearly defined. And there are three key stages that are identified by these different emotions. And the first stage is startup. Now the interesting thing about startup is that new things are easy to start, would you agree? Yes. Yeah, how easy are they to finish though? No. Not as easy. And that's why many people will enter into some form of startup with their businesses, with their personal lives, because starting is easy. Yet notice in that first stage startup that 95% of people quit without ever making it to the next stage. Now is this a surprise? It's not a surprise at all. 50% of people stay married. I don't even know if it's that high anymore. Uh, same amount of people or more change businesses or careers without ever attaining a level of mastery because they don't know what the map is. The second stage is growth. And if you are part of that 5% that has made it through that initial startup stage to growth, Here's where things really can start to happen for you and you can start to achieve and start to realize some progress along the way. And that all happens before the third stage, which is actually advanced growth. Of the 5% of people that ever get into growth, only 1% of that 5% will go to a stage of advanced growth. And so whatever example you're going to choose to follow this journey on that we're together this morning, maybe it's in a relationship, maybe it's with your career, you pick the one that you want to follow this journey on so that you can self-navigate more effectively when you leave here today. Now, in we're gonna start off with this startup. The feeling and the emotion when you start something new is excitement. Do you remember, for those of you that have, you know, a relationship, the first date, you're excited to go on the first date. You start your career in real estate. You're like, this is so exciting. I'm going to create this amazing career, an amazing life because I have this career. Maybe you've been in the industry and you've been in the industry for a lot of years and you come to EXP, you see something new, a new model, a new way of doing business that has opportunity at a level that you've never seen it before. And so you're excited. It requires excitement for people to change and start something new. And yet the next emotion that follows excitement is frantic because you make the move, you go on the date, you start the career, you change to the company, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I have all this excited energy and it's starting to feel a little frantic because what's gonna come next? What am I doing? How's this actually gonna work? I haven't done this before, this is new to me. And this is that next emotion that follows. And after that, there's this level of anxiety that kicks in. How many of you have ever felt anxious? Just by a show of hands. Yeah, anxiety is a key indicator that you're in startup in some way, shape, or form in your life. And those feelings of anxiety, now you've got the energy and the momentum behind them, and bam, you hit what feels like a wall. And when you hit this wall, you begin to question your decision. Is this the right relationship for me? Am I actually in the right career? Is real estate the thing I want to do? I've been with EXP for X amount of time, and wow, I'm so excited and I don't feel that same way anymore. And, you know, now I'm feeling anxiety and, and I'm stuck at some point. And did I make the right choice? And this is where 95% of people will quit. And they don't quit necessarily on that day. However, energetically, they start to withdraw. And it's a process that will happen over time. However, on the other side of this first brick wall is confidence. And so what is the recipe to go from being stuck, being in that first brick wall, to coming out the other side of it with an entirely different experience where now you're certain, you're confident, you're clear, you know that you know that you know, and you've got some energy and momentum behind you. Well, quite simply, people that make it through the first brick wall make an intellectual decision. They make an intellectual decision to invest, to invest the time, to invest the money, to invest the resources, the energy, to learn the skills 
to be effective. And this investment of time and energy can go on for months, it can go on for years. However, ultimately, the people that are willing to make that investment are the ones that have self-selected, you know what, I'm part of the 5%. I understand I made this decision at the beginning and I'm gonna hit a wall and I'm gonna hit obstacles and I'm committed, so what are we doing to get through the wall? And those investments are the most important ones that are made because it will define and refine you and me. And so once we're on the other side of the wall, the important thing to know about being in that wall that most people hit is that over the lifetime of a business, say real estate, 3% of the money that you will make over that lifetime of the business is made from startup in that first brick wall. So think about people that may become the XP for the opportunity to build an organization and to make a difference with other people by giving them the opportunity of what this business model provides and then it's not happening as fast or as level as they thought it was going to or maybe it's a little bit more challenging or you know uh, all of my optimism it's really important to remember that when you look at the dollars and cents of it three percent of the money over the lifetime of that journey is going to be made in an area that a lot of people don't make it to the other side on who determines that who said it who determines that you do. You determine that. I determine that. This is a decision that we make. So now we've got some confidence and we're out. Let's say we're in that relationship. Real estate's new to you as a business or an industry. Maybe you've been in the industry a long time and your thing that you've chosen is your experience being at EXP. You've got some confidence now. You've invested the time, the energy. You're developing the skills. In that confidence now, it starts to be fun. It starts to be fun. And you get into this relaxed intensity because... It doesn't really matter what anybody says. You understand that people are people, whether that's your buyer or your seller, or whether that's an agent that you're looking to become in partnership with in this business. And so you know that people are people, and you know that it's just a matter of time, and you know that he or she who is most certain wins, that it's about your clarity, it's about how much you're going to invest in people, and how you're going to see people, and where you're going to hold them, and how you're going to carry yourself. And so you start to have this relaxed intensity with it, and you have fun. Now. This is the second stage because here's where growth starts to happen. And when we see the results for the time and the energy and the effort, it's like, oh, this is, you know, I think this is good. I think I made a good decision. We reinforce that decision by looking at the results and seeing results that we like. And that growth starts to happen and take an upward trajectory. And then there's this little spot in the road, this little gap where when growth happens at a level that has surpassed our expectation, we decide that we are going to pay ourselves back. <laughs> payback, payback feels amazing, would you agree? What would be some examples of payback? A new car, what else? House. A new house. Time off. A vacation, right? And so payback feels euphoric, it's like, I have, I'm looking back at all this that I've created. Up until this point in time, I'm gonna reward myself for what's been done up until now. I go into this payback state, and it's incredible. However, what comes after payback is frustration. Why? Because most people, when they go into a payback mode, stop doing the things that they were doing prior to that that got them to the point where they were able to pay themselves back. They become a little cash drunk. They become a little lazy. They become a little lackadaisical. They go into some form of decay, enjoying life. And all of a sudden, the person that they're bringing to their life, to their business, to their relationship, is not the same person that was showing up to grow the thing. And so now, after frustration, this feeling of stress comes in because some of the wheels start falling off the cart, so to speak. And this is still a stage of growth, but notice what happens after frustration and stress is that disillusionment sets in. And that is because of hitting the second brick wall, which is much larger in size and much larger in scale. And in that second brick wall, the questions become bigger. The emotions feel heavier. And 
Staying in the second brick wall can happen to someone for months or years. You know, you know agents that you're out there talking to. Well, I've been here for 16 years. Uh, okay. What are you most energized by? I don't know, I just do my thing. Okay. Well, what's next for you? I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. Right? They've been doing it, they know how to do it. They don't have any energy or excitement or enthusiasm or passion about it because they're actually in a second brick wall where they know what they know, they're doing what they're doing, and somehow that has become enough. Except for over time, if people really honest with themselves, it's not enough. And this is an opening, this is where people are open because they begin to do research. So a lot of you may be out there thinking, I'm looking for someone who's interested. I'm looking for someone who's interested in starting a career in real estate. I'm looking for someone who's interested in learning about EXP. And I would invite you to change what you're looking for if that's what you're looking for, because interested means that I've got to make a decision. And most people uh, do not have enough information to make a decision or have misinformation and therefore are not making decisions. So instead of interested, what if you were looking for people that are open? Open to what? I always ask people on a scale of 10, I want you to rate yourself. How willing are you to learn? How willing are you to grow? And how willing are you to change? And if someone's not a 10 in all those areas, they're not ready. And what does it take to be a 10 in those areas? What do you think it takes? Pain can definitely be a catalyst. What do you think it takes to be a 10 in all of those areas? Desire, mindset, it takes a decision. I have decided that I am a 10 for willing to learn. I have decided that I am a 10 for willing to grow. I have decided that I am a 10 for willing to change. And while I might not like change, I am willing because I have decided that I am. And so in this research phase, this is where you really will find your best people. This is where we say people are at 12 o'clock. The timing is right in someone's life because they're open they're open. So not interested, they're open. And when you can find someone that's open, now you can influence and introduce new ideas, new concepts, different perspectives to someone who's open. Generally, people that are open are in the second brick wall and somewhere in their life. Now, as that research happens, uh, two things will happen. They'll do research and they'll find solutions or they'll see new possibilities or perspectives that they never entertained and become energized or in doing that research, they don't. They don't find those things and they feel lost. And so generally when that happens, people will, to get through that, that brick wall, that second brick wall, there is what's called advanced growth strategies. And this is for people, this is the 5% that have made it to growth. And of that 5%, they decide, you know what, I'm gonna take this thing all the way. And all the way will continue to shape and change because of how I define what all the way is as I continue to grow. So for the people that decide that, you know what, I'm in growth, I'm committed to going to advanced growth, what are the strategies to get there? There's very specific strategies to get there, but we're going to talk about what happens in advanced growth. If someone does not go into advanced growth, they will hit a plateau. And this is one of the most insidious places to be. Because a plateau is like, hey, you know, it's working. Uh, you know, I was talking with someone last week and they've been in this relationship they don't, you know, I love them, I'm not in love with them. How long has it been? Oh, you know, like 26 years. <laughs> okay. Uh, how long have you felt like that? Eh, probably 20. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that plateau, for however long it should last, is really an early sign of decline. Because when things plateau, it means they're already on a decline. So the importance of knowing this framework and this journey is that now that we know what it is, we have illumination into what it is, we can decide how we're going to navigate it. Am I going to be a person that goes from that startup emotion to hit a wall and go, great, it's time for me to invest skills, time, energy, money, to make me a better version of me, to come out the other side with a level of confidence and posture and certainty and clarity, to start to have fun with the thing and wear it like a loose garment, no pun intended, right? 
where people are attracted to me. We talk about attraction and people are attracted to people that are confident, that are certain, that are not pushy, that feel like, you know what? Get into real estate, don't get into real estate. My life's not gonna be any different. Get into EXP, don't get into EXP. I'm happy for you, whatever you choose to do. And I'm clear on where I'm going and what I'm doing. And that experience is because of a decision to go into growth. And that decision to go into growth will be the same decision to go into advanced growth and take it all the way. Now, the five different strategies for advanced growth are really important. Number one is identity, how we see ourselves and what that identity is. I remember going through this exercise with my husband, who I love dearly, and we were at a point that we had identified based on our emotion, we were feeling frustration, stress, disillusionment. So we knew, okay, we're the second brick wall. We were able to identify that that is the area that we were in. And as we worked with the coach and went through these strategies, it was, okay, you know, well, how, what is the identity that you have that's gonna take you into advanced growth? How are you communicating what that identity is? You know, a lot of people will look at other people and be inspired and then feel inferior because they see things they like, but they don't relate. Well, I'm not that person and it's not me. And the great news is, is that God did not make two of any one person because it would make the other one irrelevant. And so it's about finding what is that identity. Now, I remember when, when Rick and I did this, that at that point, he'd been in real estate for over 35 years. He was like a well-acclaimed national speaker, trainer, and coach in the industry. And how is it possible for someone that's got that level of confidence and that level of results to feel disillusioned and stressed? Because he didn't have an advanced growth strategy plan. And so at that point, what we did and how you create that identity is to look back and as you look back over the course of your life and your experiences, there will be common themes. And those common themes are actually your identity. And as you get really clear on how to package and language those up, it becomes the future identity that you step into with a different direction or a more strategic direction. So as Rick looked at himself, what he saw was that everything that I'm doing is about freedom. You know, I'm helping buyers and sellers to create freedom. They're investors to create freedom. I'm out teaching and training, coaching and speaking and mentoring to people in the real estate industry to help them create their version of freedom and what that looks like and what Rick saw over the course of his entire life, of a life outward, uh, outward focused on helping people was that freedom was the thing that was his driver and so we packaged that to Freedom Pathfinder. He is a Freedom Pathfinder that helps people find and identify their own paths to freedom and help them get it. Yet at that same time, the reason why he was feeling disillusioned and stressed was because he had not created his own freedom in that. So that part of that advanced growth strategy was great. We're out there doing this for everyone else. And what are the tweaks and adjustments now to align that identity so that it's for you as well? For me, as we look back and we did that exercise about identity, what was it? I could see a life of like incredible breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. And I could lace them all back together and go, that one happened and this person emerged. And it went to this next iteration and that breakdown happened and this person emerged. And so it was about transformation. Taking those experiences, learning from them and transforming into something else. Once well, I became clear on that identity for me, it was like, oh, Casey's the conductor of transformation. She's not afraid to go through it herself. And she can walk anyone else who is wanting to learn, to grow, to change, and attend through whatever transformation they want to go through. Now, what does that mean when you get really clear on your identity as an advanced growth strategy? Is that it's about standing in that identity. Guess what? People that don't want to learn, don't want to grow, don't want to change, don't like me. I'm very confrontive. No. My husband is confirming this in the front row. And you know what, that's okay. Because those aren't my people. Those aren't my people. So your advanced growth strategy and that identity is about who you are. Who you are. Who you are is enough. Have you packaged it up and do you have a direction with who you are to take you into an advanced growth strategy? The second thing is relationships. They say uh, proximity is power, but that's a Tony Robbins saying, right? 
your environment, if you read ben, Dr. Benjamin Hardy that talks about the book, Willpower Doesn't Work, that environment is everything. So who are the key relationships that you have mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially? Who are those key relationships that you have close to your proximity in your environment that are going to shape you into the next version of you in advanced growth? The third thing is responsibility. Not everything is your responsibility. Not everything is my responsibility. And the more responsibilities I can delegate that sit outside of what my identity is, which is about transformation, the more energized I'm going to be, the more alive I'm going to feel, the more fulfilled I'm going to be. Do I cut my lawn? No. It's not about transformation. It could be because I could be transforming the lawn. However, I like transformation when it relates to people, right? And, and so, so that, that fourth thing, thing then is skills. There's a whole other layer of skills that you need to learn, grow, and develop in the second brick wall to get you through to that advanced growth. And then number five is your purpose. And here's the deal. I hear people talk about purpose and vision and why, and sometimes I, I listen and I think to myself, Man, I'm so happy for you. You're so clear on your purpose. And someone says, you know, well, what's your why? Nothing happens without your why. And Okay, well, sometimes the why has been to move away from pain. Sometimes the why is about a vision. It's something that moves and changes, and some people will not do anything because they feel like, well, I'm not able to say my purpose in one sentence. Okay, so what if your purpose was that you committed to personal and professional development for the rest of your life so that you could continue to transform your own lives and then be a catalyst for other people to do the same? Is that enough? Yeah, it is. So those five advanced growth strategies are things that will propel you through that second brick wall into advanced growth. Now what I love about this is it takes away this conversation. Oh, well, you have this experience, or you're five foot nine, or you went to school here, or you came from there. Like all of that is off the table. Because when you realize that we are all human beings, with a full range of emotions that if we will silence ourselves for just a moment, check in what that emotion is and realize that emotions are our friends. Now, you know, I learned very early on that what I think is gonna impact how I feel. And so for a long time, I'm like, I just need to manage my thoughts. I need to just change what I'm thinking. And I am sorry, but three full-time people cannot manage all the thoughts that I'm having all the time that are impacting how I feel. So I decided, you know, that probably, okay, we're not doing that. What I do now is I know that, wow, if I'm having an emotion, it's coming from a certain thought. And then I check in here and I go, what is that emotion? Where am I at here? And how do I self-navigate to where I want to go based on what I'm feeling right now? So you can use this in so many different ways. If you're building a real estate sales team, if you're building an organization, and you've got people that are excited. I love excited people and I just, you know, I'm gonna rain on the parade. I'm gonna say I love your excitement. However, you're gonna face plant into a wall of challenge. I don't know what it's gonna be. I just want you to know that it's coming. And when it happens, we're gonna have a conversation about it because it's gonna be a deciding moment for you on if you're actually in on this or you're out. And don't worry, 95% of people will choose out. You'll get to decide if you'll be the 5% that are gonna choose in and actually do this. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> It's not about being in a fake emotion of like, oh, I'm just going to be excited. I'm still excited. I'm so excited. No, it's about like getting in check with where the emotion is. Owning that emotion. Recognizing there's this whole map. Okay, great. How am I going to use that as an ally, as a friend to me, right? And then for the person that's like, do I need to go to that event? Do I have to be on that call? I'll catch it while I'm multitasking from home on Zoom. Are you five percent? Where are you willing to learn to invest to grow? Willing to learn, willing to grow, willing to change? Where's the money that you're investing to do that? Where's the time that's going to do that? And the skills. It's ten thousand hours to mastery on anything, right? And for a lot of people, growth is enough. They decide that it is, and that's okay. And so they'll sit at the second brick wall for the rest of their life, or they'll jump off and they'll start something new. Yeah. 26 years with that husband, I think I'm done. I never had an advanced growth strategy to get through that second wall, so I'm going to start over with a new one. Ah, 
you know, I was at EXP for a couple years, and gosh, when I came in, I remember what it felt like. And I just don't feel that way now. I'm going to go start over here without ever getting into true growth or the advanced growth that's available. So my invitation to you, you ready for an invitation? Yes. Is that when you leave today, you leave knowing that every single emotion that you have in your body is there as a gift. So many of us have checked out when we feel the ones that don't feel the way that we like to feel. And we dismiss them or we distract ourselves with shopping and scrolling Facebook or partying or whatever it is that you do to not feel how you don't want to feel. But those emotions, those emotions are gifts. They're gifts to highlight to you exactly where you are on this journey, whether that's a relationship, whether that's your career, whatever it is, these are going to be the emotions of that journey. And what's possible is that every single person in this room can navigate to advanced growth. Who will decide that? Me. Yeah. You will. And my invitation to you would be to make that decision today. Some people think, oh, I've got to wake up and I've got to decide every day. What if you made the decision once and you never thought about it again? You didn't question the decision. You just said, in everything I do in my life, in my relationships, my relationship with myself, my relationship with others, my career, this organization of people that I'm going to be in partnership with, I'm, I'm an advanced growth person. I'm going to feel the emotions. I'm going to navigate myself through this journey. I'm going to coach other people along the same way because now we've got the map and we know nobody misses any of the steps on the ladder. And regardless of what you see on stage or what you see in the hallway, if you think that someone has skipped these feelings or these steps or these stages along the road, it's an illusion. Everybody goes through every step. And so make those emotions your friend. Realize they're there for a reason. Use them to navigate to the most incredible life ever. One that you are inspired to wake up and live every day. Thank you.